the poll and where we talked about who you guys wanted to bring in. And so, um, with that being said, we had PJ um, Falk. She kind of, um, the topics that she's going to be talking about oh, revolves around confidence, mental health, creativity, and you know, just really stepping out of your comfort zone. And she has a really great story, and she, I feel like she's a really influential person within our, uh, the whole entire Treaty 7 that would um, be beneficial to you guys, you know, and just hearing her message out. So, um, and just kind of doing an introduction to our program here with you guys. So we talked about the nine workplace essential skills and what falls into that, it goes hand in hand with the life skills. So PJ is gonna be coming in, talking about her story and seeing where you guys can relate it to um, each of these skills. And something that I feel like PJ is really effective in is communication. And so we've been talking about communication this week and while you're uploading here, I'll kind of fill you guys in. So some communication things um, that we've talked about, eye contact, body language, um, being engaged, active listening, um, tone of voice, and uh, tone and volume of voice, and then remembering to breathe, mirroring, active listening. So, you know, like I said, let's try and apply some of those stuff that we've been talking about last week and like what we talked about this morning too, and exercise those skills. That way we're able to like, you know, um, navigate through everything that we're doing and applying them to our own life and our career. So while she's getting uploaded here, we'll just see a slide over here. Okay. Well, okay. Dominic's been on to me. Super. Cool. Yeah. It's a Tsunimaki. Um, hello, good morning. My name is PJ Fox. Um, this first slide, a lot of people know me as a cowgirl that competes in rodeo. I compete in barrel racing breakaway roping and team roping. But that's not all I believe in. Um, I am from the Blood Tribe, Yanua Nation. I'm 26 years old. As you can tell, I'm a cowgirl, but I also believe in education, respect, hard work, and most of all, being resilient. Overall, I'm just a person with big dreams and goals. Some of these dreams include, um, the top left is a uh, Indian National Finals World Championship. I am really striving for, towards that. And then the bottom left is the University of Alberta. Um, I really plan, one of my goals is to get a Master's of Science in Physiotherapy. Um, I, well, in school I didn't know what I wanted to be, but I always knew I wanted to help people. And I'll tell you a story of why I wanted to be a physiotherapist. My, the girl, or the lady that really influenced me into being a cowgirl or helped me really riding and taught me how to ride was my Auntie Becky Jo. And she taught me everything I know about riding. And then she got into a bad accident to where she couldn't ride anymore. And I saw how influential physiotherapy was for her and just the fact of like being able to get back to the ability to walk. So I was like, I, I want to do that. So that really got me into wanting to be a physiotherapist. So that's one of my goals, um, uh, to become a physiotherapist, master of science. And also one of my goals, um, it's crazy, well not crazy, but last night my grandma was talking to me about the Blackfoot Confederacy and basically reminding me that our ancestors were very kind. And as you can tell from our neighboring cities and towns, like how we welcome them in and everything. And so one of my goals is to follow in my ancestors' footprints and to be kind, hardworking, and all of all to be respectful. So this is my life right now. This is what I'm doing in order to work towards those goals. Um, every day I work out, I believe that it's not only good for my health, but it's gonna benefit me in the rodeo arena, so I work for that. And then in the middle is me practicing on my barrel horse. I ride both my barrel horse and my rope horse every day, because not only does my health and fitness matter, but theirs does as well in order for us to do good. And then in the bottom right, that's me roping the rope and dummy. The rope and dummy is a substitute for roping live cattle so when I don't get to rope live cattle I rope the dummy and I do that every day as well too because well riding and roping the dummy are both going to help me try to achieve a world championship 
And then the University of Lethbridge logo, I just graduated with my Bachelor's of Health Sciences at the University of Lethbridge last spring. And that's really helping me towards my goal of getting my Master's of Science because it's a step in the direction of doing it. But also I do have the major goal of being, <clears throat> of being a physiotherapist. But in the meantime, I do know that it takes my, uh, accomplishing minor goals in order to accomplish a major goal. And so right now, I am working at Kainai Board of Education. I help students with disabilities, so when they need programs, we help assist them in order for them to achieve their schooling. So in a way, like I, I initially I wanted to help people in my career. And so, although I don't, I'm not a physiotherapist yet, I am helping the youth and still helping others in the meantime. But yeah, so when I said accomplishing small goals in order to accomplish major goals, it's a big commitment to get your master's and just financially. And so that's why I'm putting my focus on working right now, just so I can save up. And because then, like, when I go get my master's, I'll have to move to the city and the cost of living and everything. But anyway, so I'm working to get to that major goal. And then the bottom left, it represents, represents practicing my cultural ways. This is actually a real picture I took. Uh, last summer, we had the privilege of going to Yellowstone National Park. And like driving on the roads, you see these bisons or buffalo just on the roads. And it was very like sweet to see. But also I have a story, we were driving and we noticed one got bumped and it was uh, like limping and we felt really bad for it and like knowing our cultural ways, the only thing we knew that we could do to help it was to like pull over the road, on the side of the road and smudge and we put some tobacco for it. And I believe that might have helped him on his way. But it just represents of me practicing my cultural ways because that's very important in who I am and just a peace of mind also in order to accomplish these goals that I set up for myself. Um, so this is a quote I really like. Not only in, um, like, I, I use it for everything in life, from the rodeo arena, from schooling, from work. It just, overall, I really like how it represents strength and resiliency because in order to keep going you got to stand up and although in the last slide it may look like I have my life together but I do make a lot of mistakes and when I do I try not to let them hold me down I remember and remind myself that in order to keep moving you got to stand up and keep moving and then this is an example of me um, being able to stand up and keep moving after an incident. So this happened last summer. This was my first pro rodeo. And I don't know if my horse felt my nerves or because I was nervous in my first pro rodeo. Anyways, I roped the calf and you see him ducking out and he's never done this before. Anyway, so he ducked out and then he threw me the other way and I fell on the ground. And I was quite embarrassed because this rodeo was televised and so I fell off at my first pro rodeo on TV. And I could have I could have stayed down. I could have not kept going. I could have been like, well, I don't do it no more. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the girl that fell off. Like, I could have just stayed there. But I ended up moving on, and I kept going. And this is another pro rodeo in Baker, Montana. And it's one of my greater accomplishments because there was over 100 girls entered. And actually a lot of girls that I look up to and I ended up uh, placing in the top 30 and that was really rewarding because it made me realize that I'm just I'm capable of doing what I look up like to I'm capable of doing what those I look up to do as well so it was quite rewarding like if you believe in yourself that you're just as equal as those that you look up to then you could you can do it but all it takes is just that belief and being able to move forward. And then I also really, I added this one in because asking for help is one of the major things that you could do in life, no matter what it comes to. I tend to ask for help a lot when I'm stuck in the rodeo arena. I turn to 
my dad and I turn to other people who are really helpful when I'm not winning or I'm not doing well, I turn to them. But overall, I just want to say that don't be too prideful to ask for help and that there's no stupid questions in life. It's just, just take that ability to help. And also this really, um, I, I, I turn to help a lot, but it also made me realize not, because I always turn to help like in school, work, and life, the rodeo and stuff, I turn to help for that. But what I really started to ignore was my mental health. And I learned that it's not a bad thing to ask for help in your mental health. So this one is a image of exercising your brain. Um, so growing up, I've always had the struggle of dealing with depression and anxiety. I wasn't officially diagnosed, but I knew I was feeling something. And I always like pushed it down with trying to achieve more. And so I was making like my wins in life to cover up what I was actually feeling. And I never actually paid attention to doing the efforts to take care of your health, like what I do now. I take medication and I talk to my therapist regularly, but beforehand I wasn't doing that and it started to compound. And when I entered the univer my university career, I was in my third year and I had a nervous breakdown and it resulted me in going to the psych ward. And so that was, it. I like to say, well, it was traumatic, but in a blessing in the same way because it like released me to be who I am. Because growing up, I, I grew up in Cardston and I went to school in Cardston and I, uh, I always felt like I had to be something else or something more. And I never really like, I also, I turned away from our cultural ways, so I was a bit lost. And so, um, yeah, so I got lost and I think that help, helped with, or like contributed to my mental breakdown. And there was lots of stressors and it, like I never knew how to deal with stress. I just like before I said, I would just keep pushing forward and keep trying to achieve more and not like take a step back and breathe. So yeah, I ended up in the, hospital but like I said it was <clears throat> it may have been traumatic but it like released me to be who I am and accept who I am so this next slide is uh, <clears throat> just a reminder to all of you that I like to say creator or God above us all made us who we are and it's just up to us to be who we are and not try to like live up to a different image or what other people think but like to be who you are and it no matter like what you believe in but just to like follow that like even like what you enjoy like in this next slide I'll show you in a minute but just find that object that helps you be who you are and to help you come out of your shell because you'll see in a little bit that it does really help you in the in the end to be yourself so these are some more images of me. Um, I like to dress up for rodeo. I like to stand out. And I've always been this way since I was little. I've been rodeoing since I was like five. And I always wanted to stand out from like, I wasn't doing the whole tie-dye thing first. I would like wear sparkly shirts. And I always wanted to stand out either way. And then uh, a lady that I really look up to her, She's a professional barrel racer, her name's Fallon Taylor. And she dresses like this and I was like, man, like that takes such courage and I want to be like her. So I, from sparkly, just sparkly shirts, I was like, I'm going to do that too. And I actually like in the top right corner, I made those pants. So that's pretty rewarding. But yeah, most of all, just like finding that thing that you, that you enjoy and embracing it in order to be yourself. And don't be afraid to be different, like don't be afraid to stand out and that's that's something I really believe in in rodeo because I'm one of the brightest ones and 
Um, a lot of people in native rodeo like to say that I'm the Fallon Taylor of native rodeo, and I think that's quite rewarding because not only does she stand out, but she's very talented. <clears throat> so that's quite rewarding. And I also really like makeup. So I tend to express myself through that way too. But yeah, overall, just find that thing that makes you feel like you and embrace it and let it help you achieve. And like the most thing is like, like I said, like don't, don't try to be what people expect you to be, be who you're meant to be. Like do, just believe in yourself and do what you enjoy. Um, so like I was saying earlier, when you be yourself and you put yourself out there, good things happen from it. So we'll start with the bottom right, the University of Montana. After I graduated high school, <clears throat> I really, this was my dream school, it's in Missoula, Montana. And I really wanted to go to school there. And so I applied, I got accepted, but I also really wanted to rodeo in the state, so that's what really drove me to go to school in the States was to rodeo. And so I put myself out there, I let the rodeo team know, the rodeo coach know, I sent them footage of me just to show them who I am, and then they offered me a rodeo scholarship to go to the University of Montana. So that was very rewarding, that's one of my greater accomplishments, being able to rodeo down there. And then life got in the way, and my health got in the way, and my doctor, doctor recommended that I come back to Canada to school because the health insurance in the States and in Canada isn't equivalent. And if I were to get hurt or if something were to happen while I was in school down there, it would have uh, legit cost my family like an arm and a leg. So for health reasons and my doctor recommending it, I came back to Canada and I started at the University of Lethbridge. And my first year at the University of Lethbridge, I still wanted to rodeo. I still wanted to rodeo college rodeo, but college rodeo is different here in Canada than it is in the States. It's like its own circuit, so they don't intertwine. They're just, they're separate. And so I found out how to college rodeo in Canada, and I started college rodeo. And this really, um, this really, like counts for putting yourself out there because I was one of the, well, I was the only native girl that was competing in these college rodeos. And nobody knew who I was, but I still went and I still put myself out there. And my first year college rodeo with them, I won the breakaway titleship or the championship. So I won the finals for Canadian college rodeo. And that was really rewarding because I was the first native girl to ever do it and it just made me very prideful of where I came from and who I represent. And so, but that, that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't take that step and put myself out there and kept going to these rodeos. And then another greater accomplishment of mine, the bottom left, uh, Kimes Ranch. It's a worldwide known Western company, uh, Western clothing company. And they had this contest where you could be the face of this Western company. It's a mod it was a modeling modeling opportunity and the way that it the way that you applied is online and you just fill out an application you filled out an application of who you are, some pictures of yourself. And so I did that and I just took the chance, I put myself out there and I filled out the application, sent in all the info information. And then I found out that I was in the top 15. I think I, I think there was a few Canadians, and I was one of the few Canadians that ended up in the top 15. So there was 15 other people that were shooting to be the face of Kimes Ranch. And the way that they determined the winner was they had a voting contest. And that was online through their website. And so I promoted myself on all my social media platforms and I just kept asking people, I kept putting myself up there, like, please vote for me, like, this would be a great opportunity. And then, sure enough, I got the most votes and I won this modeling opportunity. And they flew me out to Scottsdale, Arizona, and I got to model for this company. And then they used the pictures, like, worldwide, and 
for so my face was out there. I was the face of Kimes Ranch for 2020. So that was pretty cool. And then another opportunity that I got for putting myself out there was the T or the television network, Aboriginal People's Television Network. They came, they wanted to, they took an interest in native rodeo. And I just so happened to be at one of those rodeos. And because I dressed the way I dress, they took an interest in me. And we did an interview and they took more interest in me. And then they said, okay, we, we want you on our documentary and we want to follow you on the rodeo trail. And so for the past two years, APTN has been following me on the rodeo trail and just documenting my life. And yeah, this show is called Rodeo Nation and it'll be airing this late summer, this fall. Yeah, so just for putting myself out there and being who I am, it gave me the opportunity to be on TV. So that's pretty cool. And like, I'm not gonna lie, people were saying mean things for the way I dress. Like there was a girl that called me a rodeo clown and. I always, I like, I've, I've heard negative comments, but I've never let it hold me down. And I just, like I said before, I really like that quote, like, not only like, do I fall, but people will push you down. And so it's just a matter of getting up and keep going and in order to strive for these great things. But most of all, so last summer, um, I had to deal with one of the hardest shifts in my life. I just lost my grandfather. He was very important in my life. And while he was here, he made me want to work hard. But after he left, it, he like still his working hard in his own life makes me still want to work hard. And like all the hardship that he went through, like he went through residential school, but he never let anything hold him back. And, he became a master electrician and he just kept going forward and kept working hard and so that's what I really aim for is to have his work ethic but most of all to be as resilient as he was. So in this in this presentation Sarah asked me to list my skills and I think my greatest skill is just to keep moving forward because in life you, you deal with a lot of hardship like like just in, in life it's general and when you go to school you deal with hardship and maybe a failed assignment and maybe anything but the only thing that matters is that you need to keep moving forward and me i told you the story of how i got into the psych ward and i had to take some time off of school i took a semester off and i could have stayed down i could have been like yeah i'm mentally ill i can't do this but I never ever said the word can't. I just, I went to school right after that semester and I kept going forward and I ended up with my degree and if I didn't have that resiliency to move forward, then I would still be stuck in that same place. So you just always have to remember and that's what I like about that quote as well, is like, yeah, you may be pushed down, you may fall down, but you have to remind yourself that you're not stuck and you have the ability to stand up and move forward. So yeah, uh, my greatest skill is being able to move forward and being able to be resilient. But, oh yeah, what I wanted to say, I really look up to Fallon Taylor and overall, I hope that I could be one of that for you people. So, cause when I, she, she um, she's on YouTube and I watch her all the time. And when I watch her, like it just motivates me to, do what I do. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I am one of those people. I hope I am one of those people for you. And I just want you to know, I'm just like you. I came from a reservation. And not only am I from a reservation, but I'm a native woman. And so there's so many things against me in order to achieve. But I didn't let those things hold me down. And I just kept moving forward and to achieve what I set myself out to be. Yeah, this is just a reminder to you that if I could do it, you can do it too. But yeah, this next one is just promoting myself. <laughs> if you want to follow me on social media, I'm also on uh, YouTube too. 
uh, Fallon Taylor really inspired me to be, make a YouTube, so if you want to check me out there or check me out here. But yeah, that's who I am and that's what I do. I'm working right now in order to achieve one of my greater goals. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like taking this all out. I'm like getting really ex inspired. But before I start talking and sidetracking, one of my things that I like to do is I like to sidetrack because I get so caught in the moment. Were you nervous presentation? Yes, very. But um, there's only four of you, so that was kind of helpful. <laughs> I guess the second part to the second part of that would be was what were some tips and tricks to keep you keep, to keep me thing? moving forward? Yeah. Honestly, I'm my biggest motivation. I <laughs> I want to always do better than I've already done. So that's what drives me to move forward is to to accomplish more than I've always accomplished. I know there's so much more in life that I could be doing, and so I'm my own drive. That's what that's makes me want to do it, yeah. Awesome. Any of you guys have any questions here? What's your most memorable reveal moment? I would say that the college finals was my most memorable because I went in there and nobody knew who I am but when I left everybody knew who I, I was so but that only took me to keep going and like to put myself out there to make sure people knew who I was and honestly I think that's what helped me achieve that because nobody knew who I was so I was like I gotta show them whereas like in Indian Rodeo a lot of people know me and I feel like that's one of the things I have to overcome is like they know me and so I don't know it's just a mental thing but yeah I would say that the college finals is one of my greater ones and also a recent one uh, I won my favorite native rodeo this past summer it was in Folsom Montana and I came back second high call so I came back uh, second place and they take a top 10 so I came back second place and then the top 10 rope again in the short round and that, I'm very proud of myself for that one because I handled my my uh, nerves and stuff and I came out on top and I won the whole thing so that was very rewarding so I think any rodeo where I'm able to handle my nerves and just do my job is one of my, my greatest or my favorite you have one around at the Ainafar oh yeah no oh, yeah that's true too I at the Ainafar they have uh, the national finals in Vegas and that was pretty great too. I roped the fastest in one round and I got to go on stage and I got to meet one of my idols, Joe Beaver. He's a great roper. But yeah, anytime I'm not nervous and I do my job, it's what is my greatest or my favorite. <laughs> awesome. Do any of you ladies have any questions? Or anything you want to build off on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't be shy. I'm, I'm an open book. Do you struggle with social anxiety? Social anxiety? I th yeah, I like all the anxieties I think I suffer from. And <clears throat> I'm not going to lie, growing up, when I had these anxieties, I didn't know how to cope with them. So I, I did suffer with self-harming for a lot of years because honestly I didn't I didn't know how to release this feeling and so that's how I would release. And so like I said, when I got diagnosed and I went to the psych ward, it was quite a blessing because it taught me how to cope in healthy ways. So like talking to my therapist or expressing myself more and not holding things in because I used to do that a lot when I was younger. I would hold things in and then it would fester and then I would have to find a way to release it. And so yeah, I've, I, saw, I've, I believe I suffer from all anxieties, but I am learning how to cope with it healthier than I used to, but yeah. I know you're thinking of something before <laughs> I start sidetracking everybody here. Um, no, I'll give you some time to think, Barfi. Okay. No, definitely. Like, PJ's story is so inspiring and like, you know, I like even had the opportunity to grow up watching PJ step into the person that she is today. And you know, like, you know, you watch these people and just how she mentioned that, <clears throat> you know, 
she had to deal with haters and I know we're talking about stepping out of our comfort zones right and so something that I really look up to PJ for a person and something that I try to figure out from like about my own self I'm like wow like you know she's so confident and like inspiring and like looking at how how inspiring she is she's opening the doors for so many people like you and me you know to step in and to be that person you know like like I said I know somebody in here mentioned like well I don't really have anybody I look up to and I really love how you said that you're your own you're your own motivation you know mm -hmm. and like I hope some of you guys could take away that message that she's sharing because like wow I'm just like you know going through the story that she told us and talking about the mental health aspect it's not just you know it's just not select people that deal with this you know it could happen to like you know the most famous people the most biggest people you know it affects everybody but overcoming that that's huge you know and she was able to overcome these barriers and that's something that we're going to be talking about within this next week we've stepped into our communication skills so this throughout this next week we're going to be talking about your guys's path and how you guys are going to be navigating that and like you know i really encourage you guys to take some tips that she had mentioned throughout her presentation here um, just before I keep going on here. <laughs> I do want to say one thing though. I like, well, she says that I'm confident, but I do suffer with anxiety a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was asking my friends for tips on how to present this. And a lot of friends were like, create an alter ego. And I was like, okay. And they're like, Beyonce does it. And I was like, but she's like the most confident person ever. But she herself, just because she suffers from her own mental things she creates an alter ego so I mean if that helps and I'm not gonna lie when I do rodeo that's my alter ego and I put on a wig or I wear my colorful clothes like it's almost like I'm not saying I'm hiding from who I am but it helps me express who I am even more so if that is to help you then do that as well like create an alter ego <laughs> And even just to build on that, like, you know, I've seen PJ, like, you know, she dresses up in all of these outfits and I'm like, wow, like she doesn't, I know that there's haters out there, but there's so many people that she inspires and I'm among like, you know, all those people and I'm like, you know, because, you know, you see like, like, how can I say it? How, how can I say that? She's like a, she's a unicorn, you know, yes. <laughs> a flock of flamingos, you know, definitely. And like, you know, like, you know, seeing somebody step out from like the norm that everybody's doing and doing your own thing and, you know, enjoying it, having fun with it. And like you mentioned, like there's the social anxiety. Yeah. Everybody else sees this confidence and, you know, you're like, how, like, you know, I'm following the norm and all of this and that. And like, and this person's like, she, you know, she's stepping into the person that she wants to be. She's having fun with this. Yeah. How can I do that? You know? And like, that's something that like, you know, like she's been a really influential person in my life. That's why I listed her on this list. And I was surprised that so many of you guys had chosen her and I was like, wow, you know, like I'm really happy that we're able to bring the, bring her in. And I feel like she, um, PJ's still really young. So, you know, she's relatable to a lot of us. And I think that's something to build on as well. And um, just to add on, like I have dealt with the haters, but for every one hater, there's like 10 other people that love you. And just to keep that in mind, like, don't focus on those that don't love you. Because in the end, they probably don't even love themselves, right? So yeah, just focus on those that love you. And focus, my grandma reminded me last night, she was like, don't, don't worry about yesterday because it's already happened. And don't worry about tomorrow because you never know what's going to happen. And she said, just stay in the now and just be kind and be happy and things will work out. And so I think that's one of the things I am going to focus on now because I do get caught up in the past and I do get anxious about the future because that's what anxiety is. That's what my therapist told me. She said anxiety is worrying about the future and depression is worrying about the past. And so I really had to try to navigate and stay in the middle. And so tips like that for my grandma are really helpful. And just to remember that you're not alone and you can turn to your elders even if that's your grandparents grandparents or like people that are older than you they're they're pretty wise i mean they've been here longer than we have and so they have a lot to say but yeah just to remember that don't focus on those that don't like you just focus on the ones that do definitely no i love that um before i keep rambling on do you guys have any other questions or anything else that you guys uh, wrote down that you guys would like to
take out of here. I know we talked about active listening and figuring out different ways to like, you know, apply this. And it is a lot, you know, just to talk in front of like a crowd and like, you know, and like, I think that's another reason why we brought in these guest presenters, you know, to big, to find a way to help you guys navigate through things, to inspire you guys to actually step out of your guys' own comfort zones. And like, you know, I think it's like really huge on like the message that she brought in today uh, revolving around that area. I really yeah. like your hair, by the way. So Thank you. you're, you're going in the right direction. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, we definitely, we, we talked a lot about stepping out of those comfort zones and, you know, being comfortable with yourself. Just this last week, we were in a mental health workshop all throughout the week and figuring out, you know, we talked about boundaries, we talked about communications mm. and um, all of that fun stuff yeah. around in that area. And, you know, and like, you know, something that, like my ultimate goal for this program, you know, is to not only help them achieve those goals, but, but to figure out how to navigate mm. through those goals and to step out of their comfort zones and not to be afraid for asking for help. Yeah. Because it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody Absolutely. falls down. Everybody needs help. Nobody knows everything. And that's when I said too, there's no such thing as a stupid question. And just don't be afraid to ask it. Because if you're thinking it, I'm sure somebody else is thinking it as well. Definitely. I'm like, yes, everything she, that she's saying, I'm like, I said something along the lines of that <laughs> while we're like doing our activities and we're in workshops. No, and I think that's really, really huge because something that's like really surprising me when we first walked into this program, it wasn't just one person that said one thing. It was three things that came in. And I don't want to, I, for my, again, you know, my goal is revolving around this program. I didn't want this just to be, okay, here's this program, you know, here's all the information, you take it and do whatever you want with yeah. it. I wanted to build and tailor it around your guys' skills, you know, and something that came up at the beginning was communication barriers, uh, social anxiety, how do I build confidence, mm -hmm. you know? And so how am I gonna make that effective for you guys to, to help you guys navigate those goals or navigate through your guys' goals and through these challenges to overcome certain barriers to actually achieve your goals. And so, you know, I feel like PJ um, is a prime example of like, you know, that um, a prime example of overcoming and achieving these goals that we set out for ourselves to make it effective, you know. But, you know, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming yeah. in here today. It means so much to me and, you know, um, like, like I said, you know, this like revolves around the like youth empowerment, you know? And so is there anything else you guys would like to add? Um, I do want to say one okay. thing in order, what's really helped me build my confidence is accepting myself. And my therapist always tells me like, I, I have suffered with self doubt and self negative talk. And I, sometimes I listen to the haters, but she's always telling me, she's like, would you talk to your best friend like that? Would you talk to a little person like that? Like, just imagine yourself like that. Like, you have to be kind to yourself, but also to accept yourself. And that'll really help you show who you are as well. Awesome. <laughs> oh, my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, I wanted to know. How do you, like, manage your time? Manage, oh, shoot. <laughs> I like to say time is what you make it. So everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. And it's just, setting your mind to it and doing it. Like, I don't, I'm a doer, I'm not a sayer. And so if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. But yeah, it's just, and like not, I don't waste time as well. Like I work out, but they're not long workouts. I work out, I use a app on my phone and workouts are like seven to 15 minutes long. And so everybody can fit in that somewhere, right? And if like, if you think about, I like to think when I'm sitting down I'm like, I could be doing something, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know, I just, I just schedule it out and I do it, I guess. But yeah, and I like to say too, like, time is what you may get. So, you have to stay in 24 hours. Yeah, that's awesome. Do any of you ladies are, <laughs> are, are one gentleman here today? We actually have a few gentlemen in here. <laughs> but also, like, don't be hard on yourself, like, if you don't, accomplish what you set your mind out like do like I said before be kind to yourself just know that you could do it again tomorrow like you, you get 24 hours in a day and like just yeah everybody gets it and you can do what you can in those 24 hours I actually got a question this is a, uh, around mental health so so uh, 
So you suffered from depression, and you got the help that you needed, right? Yep. You're going to the, um, I guess the one question I have is, have you found yourself, or are you still searching for yourself? Some days I feel like I know who I am, but some days I don't. And so when I don't feel like I know who I am, I do turn to help and to like therapists or family members. I'm always asking my mom, like, I tend to ask my mom a lot. I'm like, well, what did I do when I was younger? Like, mm -hmm. And so I tend to turn to my younger self because that's who your true self is. So that's who you're starting to be, right? And so I turn back to who I younger was or even who I was last year, like, Am I still that person? But also, don't be afraid of change because you can become a better person as well. Mm -hmm. But it's good to like be balanced and check in with yourself. Like, am I still that person? Yeah. Yeah. So I turn to my family a lot, and I turn to my therapist. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I think it's important to know that she does speak to her therapist regularly, yeah. and even though through COVID she did it on the phone. Yeah, um, it's mm -hmm. impossible. Like you don't. Yeah. It's a, I'm not gonna lie. When I first started going to therapy, it was a lot of pressure to sit with a stranger and like tell her my problems. And like, if you think talking on the phone is easier, it is easier. So just take that initiative and talk to someone on the phone. And here's one thought: white people have to pay for therapy, and therapy is a lot. Like they say, at each visit is like 150 bucks. Because we're First Nations, we get it free, so we might as well take advantage of that, right? I mean, that's not the only reason why I'm doing it. It's also very helpful, but <laughs> it's an opportunity given to us, so why don't we take it? Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, do any of you ladies have any more questions? What's your favorite writing outfit? Oh, okay, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this wig, I say it's my lucky wig with this gray platinum. But I really like that wig as well. But I think any time I wear tie-dye pants, like in that middle picture, I have like Sarabe pants. But any time I wear tie-dye, I think that's my favorite. Tie-dye's my favorite. But that gray wig, I've won in it, so it's kind of like a superstition. I'm like, I'm gonna wear it all the time. Awesome. Uh, is there anything you two ladies want to add on here? <laughs> oh, she definitely is. She definitely is. <laughs> yeah, no. PJ has been very, very influential. And like I said, look, there's so many cool things that could happen in your life when not only like you believe in yourself, but you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. And like, like she had mentioned, you know, she does deal with anxiety, and I know that's something that we talked about here. But you know, you know, overcoming those barriers and just stepping out of your comfort zone. Look at it's Look at how all of the cool things that came along with her. Like we had, um, she had mentioned like the modeling and then like the TV series and all of the championships. Like it's huge and you know, if she can do it, why can't you, right? And then all it takes is just stepping out and trying it. Like you never know until you try. And so you may get rejected, you may not, but the fact that matters is you tried and you put yourself out there. And that's what matters is putting yourself out there, coming out of your shell. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Any more questions here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the only reason why I'm like, you know, why I'm asking you guys and like, I know I'm kind of, I've been, while we're, we've been here, we've been together for five weeks, our program so far. And I think like a really huge thing is that like, you know, I'm like my job as a facilitator is to encourage them to step out of their comfort zones to make sure that they ask questions so we need like those targets that we talked about that's why you know I'm not being like super pushy on you guys but like you know I'm helping you guys overcome those barriers and it's just little things that like she mentioned that add up to one big thing to help you get to where you need to be and I think that's a huge thing and you know stepping into the person that you know you're not who you want to be but who you're meant to be right mm -hmm. definitely and like just something that I would like to add on, you know, we have a cultural aspect in this program that we do every Friday. It's like our cultural component and like um, we have lessons around it. So uh, we talk about happiness, faith and like um, like all of these uh, values like um, that relate to Mitsukipi, Kimma Bifits and, and how we can apply it to our own lives. And I'm like, you know, I think it's so important how you said, you know, you have 
prayer kind of helped you find yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, because I was lost, mm -hmm. and I was, and the only reason was is because I was neglecting that side of me, and I didn't, I didn't have no faith. I didn't have, and it's because I was neglecting it. And our like, we believe in a circle of life, and honestly, I was living in a square because I was forgetting that component. But I do practice it every day, and even like, I. I don't know how to pray. <laughs> I asked my grandma one day, I was like, well, what do I pray for? How do I pray? And she's like, honestly, it's just talking to yourself and what you want. And like, it's just wanting better things and hoping for better things. And I've always loved the smell of smudge. So even if I don't pray, I, I smudge. And honestly, just that smell reminds me to think positive. And so I may not pray, but I know like lighting it, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm thinking positive because of that smell, so I relate the two in in a way. But yeah, don't forget to don't forget where you come from for sure. No, that's awesome. Like like I mentioned, you know, and something that we talked about last week, you know, we come from a really powerful people, and like you know what we've been through isn't just like you know it's not us, you know, like going back before that, you know, like we are a powerful people and, you know, we've overcome, and like she mentioned, resiliency, you know, to the prime example yeah. of resiliency, <laughs> you know, and I think that, no, that's definitely really awesome and how, like, you know, just, not just prayer and, like, religion, but just having a faith in something to help you overcome mm -hmm. um, whatever you're going through, you know, that's something that we're talking about and, like, we kind of mentioned, I don't want to push religion on you, but, like, looking at like you know how it's helped our people not just her but you know other influential people that um have gone through things you know just going back to prayer or just finding faith in something to help you get past those tough times in life yeah, yeah definitely um if, if there's anything you guys want want, want to add on here <laughs> anything else you guys want to add on here like i said before i dealt with some extreme hardships like being in the psych ward, losing my grandfather, a lot of these are like having to move home from my dream school. A lot of these could have kept me low, but I just kept getting up. It's just a matter of getting up. That's all you have to do. Like, obviously, Creator or God or whoever you believe in gave us legs for a reason, right? So, might as well use them. That's awesome. Yeah. So, just before, if any of you guys, do you guys have anything else here? So just before we kind of close off here, you know, is there one ultimate message that you can give them to take away from today and everything that you just said? I would say accept who you are, but don't be afraid to step out as well. Like, just just try, just, just try come out of your shell. A lot can happen from it. So if anything, I'd, I'd want you to take that away. Don't be stuck in your shell. There's so, so many opportunities, and I love that you came in and you shared that message because it's going to lead us into this next week okay. and everything that you're talking about. Uh, it's no, it's just like it, it goes hand in hand with our lessons, and that's why I'm really happy that we got you right at the beginning here <laughs> while we go through it. But no, you know, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming in, you know, this you know just you know like there's so many influential people that you look up into your like look up to in your life you know and i like to look up to people like you know like there's so many famous people that you could look up to but you know like even in the local area you know and like so you know pj is one of those prime examples you know just growing up watching her and i'm like wow you know like she's opening the doors up for like you know young women and young men like us to go after our goals and like you know I think that's huge and so like you know I'm gonna really encourage you guys you know go follow those socials you know and if you see PJ in the community I know everything's opening up now here <laughs> we're good you guys are having an Indian days yeah. here and um, you guys might see her at the rodeo um, we are really close in communities we're just over in Canada <laughs> you know I encourage you you know Say hi to her, you know, and if you, you know, if there's something that you thought about, like after this program, like she has her um, social medias on here, you know, I encourage you guys to ask a question on our two, and I'm pretty sure she'd uh, be willing to answer it, you know, just to help you guys get on track to where you guys want to be or to help you guys step into that person and, you know, um, 
Um, I'm friends with PJ on ba Facebook, unfortunately. I don't have Instagram, but I'll follow you on TikTok <laughs> here too. <laughs> and, like, YouTube. You know, like, <laughs> YouTube. Um, YouTube. You can just, PJ Fox will pop up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, she has a really great message too. Um, especially on, like, you know, I, like, she's, I'm friends with her on Facebook. And, you know, like I said, you know, stepping out of your com comfort zone. And I feel like, you're very, very real. Like, you don't like, put out this persona. Yeah. So you're like, you know, like, I felt here. I did good here. Yeah. But, you know, you're like, you know, like, the way I look at you from my own perspective, I'm like, you know, you're your own person. Yeah. And I'm like, how how can I step into being my own person, you know? And, like, yeah. you know, just, like, that's why I said you're so influential and I'm so happy that you came to this program. And it, like, you know, um, if you do visit her social socials, you'll see like oh like you know like wow she's herself you know and how can i be myself and how can i be comfortable with being myself and i think that's that's another huge me message out of all of the things that she shared here and how it intertwines and so yeah no i welcome you guys if you guys here in the um in the community here i know where you like i said you guys are gonna have your indian days and everything i welcome you guys to you know say hi to pj uh, as you guys go along on your own journeys follow her and like I said, if you guys have any questions after this, you know, let if you guys are super shy, let me know, and I can reach out to PJ as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that's awesome here. And I'm like, just as soon as um, we're done talking here, I'll like go and open up my socials. <laughs> we're huge on TikTok here. <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely. Follow me. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you reach out, I'll definitely respond. I'm not. I don't think I'm better than. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's just being your own person and having fun with it. Yeah. And then another message that we came in with here, you know, having fun. Like, how can I make this fun for myself and how can I make it effective for others? You know, yeah. and I think that's really, really important as well. But, you know, other than that, both, just before I wrap up here, do any of you guys have anything else you want to add on? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to leave anything unsaid, just in case. Um, but no, you know, I want to thank you so much for coming in here and like, you know, taking time out of your own day and, you know, you kind of shared with us everything that you did um, and that you're currently doing and like, you know, you're a very, very busy oh. person. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about, I try this time or spend my time well. <laughs> yeah, for, like, you know, everybody's time is valuable, you know, yeah. and taking your time out of your day, and, you know, uh, coming to share your message and your story with us just to inspire us as I think it's like, you know, very, very, you know, like I'm really grateful yeah. for this. And like, you know, like I said, you know, like, you know, we're here to inspire our youth and empower our youth and see what happens, you know, even after this program, you guys. So, again, I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank you too, Liz, here. <laughs> I might reach out to you after. We're going to do yeah. some marketing. So, if you okay. see your pictures on our socials, oh, sure, yeah. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't. Okay, awesome. Now, thank you so much for coming in. And yeah. Yes, no, thank you for having me. It was a little nerve-wracking, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I did go to university, and I did do presentations, and public speaking is always the first struggle. It was fun. <laughs> I'm glad I got to show you who I am. And yeah. I, I hope you take away that don't be afraid to be yourself. Definitely. No, and I, like, again, you know, I think it's awesome that we're giving you that opportunity, too, to apply, you know, yeah. all those things and to allow you to practice it. It's just gonna help you even yeah. help help you further here. Oh, good morning. This is oh, hi. Uh, this is my boss here, Jay oh, Colter Smith. One of your bosses. Yeah, one of my <laughs> bosses. One of my like uh, world's greatest bosses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have BJ come in as our guest presenter. She's um, kind of speaking around the left.